It's DDK, and guess what, baby? I'm back with Van Talk episode three, baby. We are here trying to get this cheese. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hey, make sure you like the video. Also, if you're not subscribed, make sure you smash the subscribe button. We are on our road to 100,000 subscribers, and we need your help to do it. So again, make sure you like the video, make sure you smash the subscribe button. Also, comment below and let me know if you like the video or not. I need you guys to do that. But it's time for us to get busy. I'm glad you guys are with me. Okay, so last week the question got cut off at the end of the video. Um, so we're gonna start with that question first. So that was from at Chris K and they said, do you feel like you're helping some drivers by giving them everything ready at the plate and at the same time ruining it for others because you're bringing new drivers to the apps that they use and at the same time that there's already less work for them? So I do want to say this. First off, I don't even remember what I said last week, but we're going to continue from last week. If you haven't watched last week, last week's van talk, make sure you guys go check that out. I do want to say this. First off, Chris, I, I be seeing you in the comment section. You be having a lot of negative comments. That's why I'm going to start off saying that. I have been seeing you in the comment section, and it seems that you're very pessimistic about a lot of things, which probably is the reason why you're asking this question. I understand that people may blame us YouTubers that we're oversaturating the market. We're doing this. We're doing that. We're doing this. We're doing that. But I do want to ask you a question, Chris. I want to ask you a question. My question to you is, out of all of the YouTube videos that you watch, all the GigTubers, have you learned any information? And in the information, have you applied it to yourself? If you have done so, then you're being a hypocrite. I'm just gonna say it right now. You're being a hypocrite on trying to say that we're oversaturating the market and all this and all that, but you're still using the information that you, we're given. I also wanna say this, that all of us were new drivers at some point. At some point, you were a new driver. And I'm sure that the old drivers, when you came there, they was mad that you were there. So keep that same energy with the, uh, with the new people, baby. So that's all I wanna say. Also. The reason why I made this channel in the first place was to help as many people as possible. And I understand that some people may like it and some people may not like it, but that's what I'm here to do, baby. God put me on this earth to help people. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna help as many people as possible. My question to you is, when was the last time you helped somebody? Also, I wanna say this. Out of, if I tell a thousand people about this app, I honestly believe that maybe only 10 to 15 out of that thousands actually going to go through with everything some people are going to be complaining about you know uh background check payments they're going to they're going to be complaining about paying 35 dollars for a background check so they automatically cancel it out i'm not about to pay 15 dollars 35 dollars for this background check that's they automatically cancel it out and not to mention that this is spread over 50 states so it's going to be 10 to 15 people out of 50 states so i don't even understand it's really not going to affect your market as much as you may think i'm in chicago in the chicago land area and honestly, yes, I have seen some new drivers and I haven't seen some new drivers. So it all depends on what you're going to do. You can't blame everybody else for your failures. If you're not making enough money, you have to figure it out. That's just the end all be all, baby. And I understand that you, some of y'all, let me just say this. I don't know. I'm not saying this specifically to you, Chris, but some of y'all just need to go back to a regular job. It's not for you. It's not for you. When you, you complain about this, you go complain when you go back to your job. You're just a complainer. You're just a complainer and you're a naysayer. And a lot of y'all low-key be hating. Not low-key, high-key. Y'all just ain't got it, baby. I'm sorry. Everybody ain't got it. This is not for everybody. Some of y'all, just the honest, blunt truth, just need to go back to a regular 9 to 5 job. It's the best thing for you. That's all I'm going to say. Okay, so question number two from... Well, which is actually number one from this week, but question number you. two um, comes from Off Topic Comma, and they say, glad I found your page. You've truly helped all the nerves and fear that I've had getting in the industry. Um, and then they ask two questions. One is, can you do a sh short tutorial in your next video about how to strap in packages? Oh, I have to, a matter of fact, we ain't gonna wait for the next video. We gonna do it today. Today we're gonna do this. We're gonna go in the back of the van right after I answer the second question, and then we're gonna strap some down. I'm gonna show you guys how to do it. I honestly I learned how to do this off of YouTube. I'm talking about it is super sweet. And I personally I did have a lot of issues when I first started like um putting together the ratchet straps because sometimes you can put it in wrong. Pause, you can put the uh put the um the one piece in wrong and it's not gonna strap right. So I'm gonna show you guys the most simplest, easiest way to do it. Okay, and question number two from them says are you able to take multiple orders in your van? For example, one from your carrier company and one from Rody, or will you be penalized for that? 
That is a great question. Again, that's a great question because you're just now starting out. Me personally, I'm going where the money at, baby. If I if I have a roadie order and a load in the back of the if I have a load in the back of the van, right, and the roadie order pop up and it's going the same way, I'm definitely doing it. I wouldn't recommend you doing it if it's going the opposite way. Like if you got a load and then you got to go back this way and then go back this way to do it, I wouldn't do it then. But if it's going around where I'm picking up at and I'm going the same way, I'm definitely taking that joint. Okay, now I'm gonna show you guys how I use these ratchet straps. When you get it from the store, it's gonna come like this. One side like this, and the other side is gonna be wrapped up like this. It ain't gonna be this dirty though, of course. You know, we may not have grinding so we can shine. So it's gonna be separate pieces like this. This is the easiest way to do it. It's very simple. So, that part on the floor. You see this little thing right here? This little slice right there in the middle? I don't know if you guys can see it. It's a little slice right there. All you're gonna do is put this in here. Make sure it's closed all the way. It's closed all the way. You're gonna put this in here like this. And then you're gonna slide it in. Pause. You're gonna slide it in. You're just gonna pull it like this. You see how easy it's moving? So, it's that simple, just like that. Moving easy, right? But when you're doing this, you gotta make sure it doesn't get tangled. You see how it's flipped it like that? You gotta make sure it's straight. So, let me get it back straight. That joint folded up in there. Okay, there we go, straight again. Now, when it's time for you to ratchet, all you're gonna do is lift this lever like this and close it. And it's already ready. Boom. That's how you're gonna tighten it. That's it, that's all. When you wanna loosen it, all you're gonna do is pop it open like this, all the way open. And you could start moving it again. Now, how do you strap down the freight? I'm gonna show you guys that right now. Now, this is how you guys are going to strap down the freight. I hope you guys can see everything that I'm showing you guys. Now, in the Sprinter vans, they do have D-rings. They have like 10 of them in here. It's like one, two, three, four right here. It's like three or four right there, and there's some up front right there, so they wrap all the way around. These are the D-rings. So, this is our ratchet strap that we just fixed up right here, right? This is all you're gonna do, it's very simple. All you're gonna do is take this hook. You see this hook right here? Take this hook, and you're gonna put it on one D-ring. And then you're gonna take the other hook, which is right here, and all you're gonna do is put this on this other ring right here. Bingo, that's it. And then, you're just gonna pull this closed like this. Like that, you see that right there? Pull it closed like that, and then you're gonna hit this lever. It's a little lever right here. Hit the lever, and then you're gonna close it. Open, close, open, close. That's it, it's strapped in. Take it, make sure you shake the freight so it don't move anywhere while you're driving. It's just, that steep, it's just that simple. Now, this is the question. How do you loosen it up? This is how you loosen it up. All you're gonna do is hit the lever and open it like this. You heard that noise? That means it's open, it's loose. All you do is pull it like that. This is the reason why I tell you guys, do not do this. Don't do this. You see how it's closed? It's strapped down, but it's open like this. So right when you hit that bump, it's gonna boom. It's gonna pop that joint open. And when they pop it open, what it's gonna do is loosen up. Then the fridge is gonna be popping around. So, you guys wanna make sure you do it the right way. But I'm glad you asked that question. I get it all the time. It's time for us to get back on the grind. Let's go. Okay, question number three comes from at Toya Drives. And she says that, I haven't seen you showcase any medical courier apps in a little bit. Would you say that they're still profitable? If so, what apps would you recommend other than drop off? Because I never get called back. Shoo! Shout out to Toya. Toya, up uh, for her YouTube channel right there. Shout out to Toya Drives. She has a YouTube channel. Make sure you guys go subscribe. She's definitely giving out some games, some guidance, attention, motivation, and education. And she's very inform uh, informative on these apps. So, I do want to say this. Honestly, I know you're in Chicago too. So, honestly, I don't know if anything in Chicago as far as gig apps go, but I did go on Indeed for you and, and screenshot some stuff. That's in close to. Look, they have one called uh, KC Enterprises Inc. It's right on Indeed. It's in Elk Grove Village. That's a medical carrier place. And then they also have one called 16 Tons Carrier and Delivery Service. That is in Chicago. So you might want to check those two out. I found those on Indeed. That's why I find a lot of information on Indeed. I also listened to a, a couple other people like, I found out from drop, I found out about drop off by Indeed. Also, um, 
Sean in town. He's another oh, but his YouTube channel right there. Shout out to him. Sean in town also does some videos about medical care. So you might want to check his channel out. But shoe shout out to you for the question. Keep on grinding and keep on shining. Alright, question number three comes from at Kenneth and he says, Okay, I have to ask, one, will your business partner ever make a visual appearance on your channel? I'm gonna let her answer this question. Go ahead. I'm gonna let her answer this question. I'm gonna let her go ahead and answer. I know y'all be thinking that I don't I'm the reason why she don't be on the channel, but I'm gonna let her answer. Go ahead and answer. No, I won't make a visual appearance on the channel. If you look that's just her, that's her purpose. She don't want to be on the channel. It is what it is. So everybody don't want to be on camera. Everybody, she does the behind the scenes stuff. She makes the thumbnails. She does the description. She does the more, the more technical stuff. Cause I'm not good at technical stuff. I'm using, I'm, I'm ready to go out there and get busy. That's what I do. I do my part. She do her part. That's the reason why you need to have a team. Together, each achieve more. That's another thing that Wallow267 and Gilly the King came up with. Team. The acronym is team and it stands for together, each achieve more. And I do want to say this. This is a great question, though. And there's no slack to you or anything like that. But everybody needs to play their role with the team. Jordan had to play his role. Scottie Pippen had to play his role. Dennis Rob had to play his role. Everybody needs to play their role. If, if, if Dennis Rob is trying to do what Jordan's supposed to be doing, you're going to mess up the team. So everybody needs to play their role and play their part. And it's going to, it's going to get greater later. Um, for me, it's more a privacy thing. I, I like my privacy and I don't want, you know someone walking up to me and being like oh i saw you on youtube like i don't i just don't want any of that oh so that's that brings me to another thing that i, I was gonna talk to you guys about in another video but i'm gonna talk about it right now because we're gonna stretch this video out hey make sure y'all watch the video and smash that thumbs up right now and also comment below and let me know if you're liking the video or not and smash the subscribe button if you're not subscribed i want to say this i want to talk about how it is being a youtuber uh, or content creator something like that it's it's cool you do get a lot of love i love seeing my subscribers i love seeing them I love when they happen, they see me. I take the pictures with them and all that stuff. But you also got the haters on the other side that you don't know who they is. They know how you look, but you don't know how they look. You don't know who they is. They name could be one, two, three, four, five. You have no idea who they are. You don't know nothing about them. You don't know what they own. They might be mad that you told somebody about this app, just like Chris was saying. They might be mad that you told somebody this app, now they got a problem with you. So it's, it's good and bad with everything. With everything, life is going to be a yin and a yang. You are going to get some love from subscribing. Huge shout out to all my subscribers. I love seeing y'all. When I be seeing y'all in traffic getting that money, I, it's just, it makes me smile. I ain't going to lie. That joint makes me smile y'all out there getting busy, getting that cheese. But also, on the other hand, you got people that don't like it. They don't like it. They don't like it. They don't like you being around. They, they be cool, but then they don't, really, they don't really like you for real. It's just a lot that goes on with this, and you guys would never know it because I don't never show it. So it is what it is. You're going to have some good people. You're going to have some bad people. But the world must keep going on. We are trying to get it on. Okay. And then his other question is, what's the true nature of your relationship? Of who relationship? Are you truly just business partners? We get married. If we get married, go, we, we, <laughs> we get married. <laughs> I'm not marrying you. We are getting married. I don't know. Y'all don't probably don't know this, but I'm a headache to deal with. I know that y'all asked for it and all. I'm a headache. I'm I'm a headache. I know I'm a headache. I know I'm a headache. I'm I'm a, I'm I'm look, I'm a headache. I already know this. I'm I'm very hard. I'm not I ain't gonna say very hard to deal with, but I ain't gonna say that. I maybe I am, maybe I'm not. I don't know. You are. I'm hard to deal with. Because I, I'm very particular on how I want things. Things have to be a certain way for me, and I have to. It has to be right. I don't like. I don't like um, half half doing stuff. I'm not a half doer. It's just gonna be full throttle. Either I'm 200% or full doing it, or I'm zero percent. There is no middle ground with me. I'm either going hard or I'm not going hard. And also, I'm hard headed too. I don't like to listen. That's one thing. I don't like to listen. I want to do everything my way. That's the reason why working a job was not for me. Cause I want to do everything my way. I don't want to listen to the supervisors. I want to do it my way. So, you know, that's what it is. What you got to say about this? Nothing. You are very hard headed. And it takes a while. I'll have to like I'll give a suggestion, and then you won't be. You'll just shoot it down, and then a day or two will go by, and you'll be like, you know, I was thinking. You know, you said it, it takes a while. It, it does takes take some days. Wanna know why though? It's because the people who did our creators, it's kind of hard for them to envision what you're saying if they're if they if if they're not doing it because the vision comes in my head how i want to do this how i want to do that but listening to somebody else is kind of like constructive creativity and a creator is like it's like mozart he painted the painting but somebody else tell him you should do this so he ain't gonna really you know take kind to that that's the reason why i'm like that
Okay, question number four comes from at Dion Shayla, and they say, I'm just start starting out in the driving apps, and I wanted to know if you use the bank cards that the apps offer, such as the Uber card, or do you just link your bank account as payment? Me personally, I link my bank account as payment because I ain't gonna lie. I, I don't want to have all them 13,000 cards. We got 30 apps, so I don't want to deal with me having 50, 50 cards, 30 cards, and I got to swipe this card and swipe this card, this one for this, this one for that. It's just too much for me. I'd rather just put the money into my bank account. They do have some apps like Bungie and Freight that are going to make go through a, you're going to go through a third party and it's called Branch in my area. I don't know how it is, maybe it is in everybody else's area, but in my area it's called Branch and the money goes through Branch and then you just take the transfer the money from Branch to your bank account. So that's how I do it. Um when you decided to um just link your bank account instead of getting the card with them, were you skeptical on it at first and if you were or weren't, have you had any issues with it? I understand why somebody will be skeptical. Me personally, I'm not skeptical. I haven't had any issues. They must they send the money. And one thing I do is I make sure I check everything. I check it all. I'm checking it. I'm making sure the money is the, supposed to be, how much money is supposed to be in there. I'm checking it. Because you know, sometimes they mess up something. So I make sure I check everything. But all in all, I haven't had any issues. And it's been uh, two years or so. So everything has been going okay with the, with the, uh, the apps. Okay, question number five comes from at that's so Florida and they say how do you handle bad weather and here in Florida we have weeks where sometimes it rains non-stop which then leads to flooding if this is one of your obstacles how do you handle it if it's not do you have some advice sheesh that's critical I ain't gonna lie see everybody everybody in other states like down south and all that stuff down south and uh, west coast and all that stuff they be talking about the way west because it be cold and storming here but we don't be getting them hurricanes all that rain flood and all that stuff we don't get stuff like that earthquakes and all that i rather just we do have to deal with snow and i'm let me knock on some wood i don't know no wood there ain't no wood but whatever it is Fortunately, we've been fortunate enough to not have to really deal with snow like that. Honestly, if I was in your situation, and I mean, if you can't move, you can't move. One thing I do want to tell you guys is always make sure you're being safe. Do not be tweaking. Do not tweak. Do not be out there driving the snowstorms and what and mess up your van and all that stuff. It's flooding. It's getting water all in your radio. Do not do that. If you if you can't go out, you can't go out. It is what it is. That's another reason why I be talking about the dedicated routes. On the dedicated routes, they don't care what happened. They want you there. So just be safe, guys. Whatever you do, just be safe. Um, when it's snowing and stuff here, sometimes when it has snow and we did have a van, we try to go out uh, in an SUV if we can. If not, it just is what it is. Another thing that I want to say is very, very important. Make sure you guys have great windshield wipers and great tires. Those two things you're going to need. Especially if you're in the snow, if it snows in your area, or even in the rain, because you that rain coming down, I'm talking about storm, shh, you can't see nothing. You want to make sure you guys have great windshield wipers and good tires. Okay, question number six comes from at Keith Howard, and they say, I have a GMC 2500 Savannah cargo van. Is there any possibility for me to use it in gig work? And if so, what would be the better apps for a van like mine? Absolutely. You, def you definitely can use that uh, GMC uh, Savannah. You definitely can go out there and get busy with that. Honestly, it depends on your area. I don't know everybody's area. I don't know, I don't know what your area is, and I don't know what gig apps are good in your area. But I would recommend you try out Dispatch, um, Curry, Bungie, Go Share, Freight. You can try the Freight app too. And also, I would recommend you go ahead and add on TaskRabbit. On TaskRabbit, it's great because you can put your own prices on there. So you can tell them how much you're going to charge per hour on whatever you may be picking up or dropping off or anything. So I would say those are some good apps to start off with. But I do have a video showing you guys 30 apps. You can go on there and watch. I got 30 apps on that joint. Sign up for as many apps as you can, honestly. That's what I would really do. Sign up for as many apps as you can and make as much money as possible while you got the apps. But you can definitely go out there and get busy with a GMC Savannah van. Okay, question number seven comes from at Rapid99. And they say, why did you go with gas instead of diesel? And what happened to Sunrun? Um, the reason why we went with gas instead of diesel is because, number one, the guy at the dealership said that if you're going to stay more in, in the city, in this area, then he would recommend gas. And also, we did find out during our research, that's why you got to do your homework. Like J-Main say, do your homework. 
on how the diesel Mercedes Sprinters be having death problems. Do your homework on that. They do be having some some people be having the DEF problems with their vans. So that's another thing I did not want to deal with. And you got to get that blue stuff with the death the death uh I don't know what it's called. The blue stuff you got to put in your gas tank. And what if you don't put it in there right? And what if you forget? And does all gases have diesel? Some of them do, some of them don't. So I don't got time to deal with all that. And let's go ahead and talk about Sun Wrigley. Huge shout out to everybody at Sun Run. Honestly, what happened with Sun Run is I don't know. I'm just going to tell you the truth. I have no idea. They just stopped sending me orders. I had orders. I was getting them joints every day, every day, every day, every day, getting them joints going crazy, 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 crazy. And then one day, I kind of slowed down because they lowered the pay a little bit and I stopped getting them as much. I stopped taking them as much. And then after that, it just like, they just stopped coming. They had some good orders. I did do those good orders, but after that, they just stopped coming in. I wasn't getting them anymore. So I personally really don't know what happened, but hey, some run. Let me come out there and get busy again. I'm trying to get these dividends and win. Let me come out there and get busy one more time. I ain't stopping until I shine. Question number eight comes from Motown YB, and they say, uh, this is a little bit off topic, but what platform did you use for XRP? Oh, me, me personally. This is me personally. Everybody can do it how they want to do it. I'm not recommending any platform to buy anything. I just want to say that because everybody want to, man, you, I right, look, I don't want no problems. Me personally, I use crypto.com to buy my XRP. I do know that my guy, he used something called Exodus. My guy, Mike, Mike, he used Exodus. Everybody used different things. But me personally, I use crypto.com. The reason why I use crypto.com is because that's the first thing that somebody told me about. So that's the one I downloaded. That's the one I signed up for. And I've been using it ever since. Question number nine comes from at Julio Diaz. And he says, how can I get my LLC? And how do I find the load boards? Um, how do you get your LLC? There's multiple ways to get your LLC. Number one, you can use uh, a, like uh, a website like LegalZoom, and you can sign up through there. And also, you can do it yourself. You're going to go to, I live in Illinois, so I think it's IllinoisSOS.gov or something like that. It depends on what state you're in. And then you also can use a lawyer. You can call a lawyer and tell them what you want to do, and they're going to hook everything up. That's what we did. We went with the lawyer. Now, why do we go with the lawyer? We went with the lawyer because I don't want no problems. I want to make sure my stuff is done correctly. I don't want to mess up, tweak some, make some wrong, and then it's messed up. So we decided to go with a lawyer, and I understand that some people don't want to do that, but it is what it is. Everybody gets to do it how they want to do it. Me, personally, we just went with the lawyer. That's it. That's all. And how do you sign up for the low boards? Now, all you gotta do is go on Google. You can type in one, two, three, low board. That's some. That's one that some people use. They got selectors. That's another one other people use. And then we have DAT low board. That low board. That's another one other people use. But I do know that for the most part, from what I think I know, I don't know this for sure because I don't use low boards. Um, that they're gonna charge you a monthly fee to use the low board. So that's another thing you have to worry about if you guys decide you want to get your DOT and MC and all that, your own authority. You are gonna have to pay a uh, a fee every month to be on these low boards. Okay, question number 10 comes from at third element and they say, how do I get a dedicated route if my van is in my name and not in my business? Um, I think you can still get a dedicated route. You just have to put, you just have to be paid through your business. So you're going to put your EIN number and all that information on the application when you fill out the application and then they're going to pay the business and then the business is going to pay you. So that's how you're going to do that. Okay. And the second half of his question says, I need to get commercial insurance with cargo coverage, but can I do that in my name? If the van's in my name? I do think you can do that because you're going to put it under the business name and your name. So when you're going to put it under the business name and you're going to be listed as one of the people who under insurance so i do think you should be okay with that you shouldn't have any issues with that um also i do want to say this you can go to some companies some companies you can go through their insurance so they already have insurance to the company and you just go under their insurance and then you just pay a certain amount per week or every two weeks or every month however it goes and then you can do it that way so you don't even have to worry about all switching all this and doing all that you can just go under their insurance and get busy like that but huge shout out to you and that is also a great question Question number 11 comes from at Randy Wilcox and he says, how do I need to set up my van to properly and safely travel loads from state to state? 
honestly, let me just say this. I really don't travel state to state like that. I just do Illinois and Wisconsin, which is not that far from each other. So, well, duh. Anyway, you know, you know what I mean. But I do want to say, maybe get you like some first aid kits, um, some flares, some cones, maybe like some tire plugs, some tire plugs just in case you get a flat or something, you just plug the tire like that way. Um, also, a great item that you might want to have is a air compressor just in case you do get a flat you can put the air in and you can plug the tire and then put the air back in that joint so you can get busy like that um also like a flashlight a blanket if you're going to be over the road over the road you probably want to get you like a heater or something you can plug in and heat yourself up just in case you're going to be staying in the van or, or whatever stuff like that i would highly recommend that also very 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 important to make sure you have uh, a good amount of straps and with the straps you want to have is a good amount of them because if one breaks you want to make sure you have backup plans for that just in case that does happen and when you're strapping up everything you want to make sure you're strapping this stuff up tight and make sure you shake the freight before you move because if you don't that joint loose you that joint come out then what you gonna do and one more thing before we go make sure when you strap everything down with the with the uh with the ratchet strap that you make sure the ratchet strap is closed because if it's not not open like this, make sure it's closed. Because if it's open, if it's if it's, even if it's like this, if you hit that button right there, boop, that joint gonna pop open. You're gonna be it's gonna be critical. Make sure you strap down the freight as much as possible. Uh, that's all I really know because I really never did over the road like that. So those are the things I recommend. But you know, I'm giving you what I got, baby. That's it. That's all. I'm trying to ball. Okay. Question number. 12 comes from at Johnson and they say I have a sprinter van and I just need to get started what's the steps the first step is finding out what you really want to do do you want to do a dedicated route do you want to do the gig apps? do you want to do over the road like what do you really want to do you want to go on a carrier company it's multiple ways that you can do this um, if you go to a dedicated route I would say go on indeed and find as many dedicated routes as you can in your area that's if you want to stay local um, also, if you want to do the gig apps, you need to sign up for as many apps as possible. And I know that sometimes I might say this app or that app, I can't really be very specific on which app to use because everybody's area is different. So what works in my area may not work in your area. So you have to find out which apps are good in your area. Um, also, over the road. If you're doing over the road, I would recommend that you go check out some YouTube channels like Eagle Express, Everything Apex. Those are the two of the guys. I think I forgot the other guy name. Big D. I don't know if it's. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I leave. I can't. I, actually, I don't care nothing. Yo, you, yo. Put the, you put an actual yo. D on it as well. <laughs> Paul, that was crazy. His name is something I don't remember, but it, that's what they call him, Big D. Pauls. But stuff like that. Go do some research. Do as much research as possible. And make sure that you first know exactly what you want to do. Sometimes everybody, they, you, you got to just make up your mind. I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to do this. And we're trying the different things. You're going to find out which one you like the best. I don't like this. This is cool, but it's all right. I don't really like it that much. Okay, I'm going to try this. Okay, this is cool. And then try that. Or you can implement two things. Like over. The, you can do over the road and the gig apps together. Or you can do dedicated route and the gig gaps. So the gig gaps is like a supplement. You could just uh, go get busy with that while you're on the road. Or go get get busy with that after you're done with your dedicated route. So I definitely would say just go ahead and find out which apps are good in your area. And definitely sign up for the gig apps. Now, I do have a video showing you guys 30 different gig apps. 30 of them. You can sign up for all of them. 30 different gig apps. And I do want to give you a tip. Before you decide what you want to do, do not go get do not hear go get that commercial insurance if you don't need it you don't need it if you're gonna be doing gig apps then you ain't gonna need the commercial insurance so figure out what you want to do first and also with a dedicated route you may be able to go to under their insurance like i said in the last guy uh question you might be able to go under their insurance so figure out what you want to do sign up for the gig apps make sure you watch the video and put me on your big screen video Okay, and last but not least is question number 13. It comes from at Bob Church. And he says, hey, McHenry, Bob, your neighbor to the west. What's the best app to use for a cargo van? I'm just starting out. I was a re I'm was now a retired carpenter. Oh, huge shout out to my guy, McHenry, Bob. You made it McHenry right over there, baby. Now, I do want to say, if you want to come out of retirement, like uh, Jordan with the 45 yards, you want to come up, let's go again, and you were willing to teach me, I definitely want to learn how to do carpentry. That's one of the things I, I've always wanted to learn. 
But I had a chance to do it when I was in job corporate. I didn't do it, I did well in the stead, but I should have done that because that's definitely something that I can make some money on later on. But um, the apps, I highly recommend you sign up for the Rody app. Rody has orders pretty much every day out there in McHenry, pick up at Home Depot, and they be like $40, $50, like pretty much every morning at 520 for the most part. But they never give it to us because it's too far away. Uh, Rody, I also would say Curry. Sign up for Curry. Um, I would say Dispatch, Task Rabbit. You are a retired a carpenter, so some people may want you to put some uh, TV mounts or something like that. That's be a good pay for you. You probably could charge them 100 125 for you to mount the TV and everything, and you know how to do that already. So I would say Task Rabbit, and you set your own prices on Task Rabbit. You definitely can sign up for those apps. I also, again, have a video talking about 30 different apps, and. If you want to do a dedicated route, you want to do, they have it seven days a week, but you have to go to Chicago to do it. Um, they do have a app called GoMo. That's another one that I've done too. So sign up for those apps and go out there and get busy. Huge shout out to my guy, McHenry Bob. If he come out of retirement and show me how to do this, y'all come out along with me. I'm going to be dancing the video like P. Diddy. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I appreciate you guys for every last question. And I want to say this. Again, we're on our way to 100,000 subscribers. We're getting close to the end of the year. My goal was to have it, have it before the end of this year. It did not happen so as of so far, unless something just happened, and just which I hope it do. But we're gonna see. I'm just gonna keep on putting my work in, so we call out here and keep on getting these dividends to win. I do also want to tell you guys this. Before we go, while you're out there, make sure you think for yourself. Don't always listen to what everybody else is doing. I know that I don't know everything about everything. I'm not here to say I know everything about everything. All I know is about what I'm doing. Um, what I'm doing may not work in your area, or it may work in your area. It just depends on what area you are in. Also, make sure you stay away from negativity because there's going to be negative people regardless of whether you're nice, you're not nice, whether you're good, whether you're bad. There's going to be negative people. Stay away from them as much as possible because negativity transfers from one person to the next. So if if me and my business partner in in the, get in the van, if I if I get it, if she got the van, right? I get in the van, I got an attitude. Now she got an attitude. Stay away from the negative people as much as possible. That's, that's a very key thing about all this. And start doing more research. Do as much research as you can because you're, you're, you're listening to me, but if you don't do your own research, you, it might not work for you. So do what works best for you. Do some research. Stay away from negativity and keep on going out there and get busy. I'm glad you guys are part of the Triple C's. Hey, don't forget to throw them C's up. Throw them C's up if you're a part of the crew. Also, I need you guys to start smashing that like button more and more and more to push us out on the YouTube algorithm. Because guess what? I'm ready to hit that 100K so we get to clapping. Hey, baby, baby. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, make sure you lock in tomorrow. Well, mock lock in Monday so we can get this Monday and we're going to laugh to the bank like it ain't funny. I'll see you guys on the next one. We're going, we're going, we're flowing. You already know it. It's DDK. And I'm on my way.